someone like, please work YouTube. And so it says we're going live. So I tried to see, let's see if I can go switch over. I tried to make a little video and like, let's see if it goes. Yay! Celebrating Cozy Mysteries with Jennifer J. Chow, Ellen Byron, and hopefully Alexia Gordon will join us later. Yay! Yay! I'm so happy and honored that y'all are here. I am blown away because I was talking in the Instagram story saying they are powerhouses in the cozy community. It's Cozy Mystery Day. I am so honored and privileged and happy to be introducing you and giving people the opportunity to talk to you and learn more about your work and everything else. I'm just like fangirling so hard right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I think Jen and I can say it, it goes right back at you. You same, know, that we're, they're both thrilled. And, and I, I'm she, her too. I couldn't fit it in with my, uh, my double name. So, um, but just wanted to let you know that it's not a comment. It's just a, a question of space, but, uh, but yours, yours, you do so much for us and for the genre and for, you know, we're so like grateful to you. So it's a, it's a thrill to be here and to be celebrating National Cozy Mystery Day with you. Yeah. I and I'm love your I'm swag. Like, oh, I know. Oh, you have a, you got a cup? Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> She's like, I got this. <laughs> Hey, you know, someone stole my, so about your con, someone, you know, I had like a, a really good solid cup that I bought at like the 99 cent store where I kept all my, um, uh, my bookmarks. And like, I, I go to the swag table and my bookmarks were lying there and the cup is gone. Yeah. So like, same oh. thing happened to me. I put my You're stuff. Kidding. You know, and then it's like gone. I don't know if they threw it away or what. No, no. Someone just like, because they clearly took my book, because it was like early on. They clearly took my bookmarks out. So, and. Um, I'm nodding because the exact same thing, because I had the mug with the pens. And then all of a sudden pens were on the table and the mug that was holding them. Were oh going, my gosh. Oh, right? Someone <laughs> had, we had a beverage container thief. At it's a cup thief. A cup this thief. Is like a, we had a cup this thief. This is like a good story that we should make. Well, there was it something is, else that went missing where I was like, okay, if you really needed it, it was, um, it was, it was like, I got it at the dollar store. It was like a pack of four and I used them to put like the little business cards and little stickers in. It yeah. was the container. And I mean, there wasn't anything special about it. Like it was a small little thing too, but that went missing on like the first or second day. Cause I went wow. to go, re you know, replenish the swag table and it just sort of made its way elsewhere. I liked my cup. <laughs> I liked it. So, and it's hard to, I have another one, but still, I now, now I'm afraid, afraid. Anyway, so enough about, about voucher con thievery. Well, I have to say y'all are definitely, you, you made, I was going to say you helped make my voucher con. So I, oh, I was going to say oh. Ellen, was on the, she organized the panel and Jennifer was on it. So we had Ellen as the moderator and Jennifer is one of the panelists and it was a panel on cozy mysteries. That was one of those events that was highlighted, blocked off. I was not going to miss this event. Oh, it was a great <laughs> It was a great panel. Hey, did you make it to cozies and cocktails? I don't remember if you got there in time. I, I got to go and I was in the back. I kind of stayed in the back and then like people would, like ended up chatting with me because they saw the swag and they were like, oh, and then then I ended up in the hallway because they had questions about the book club. I'm like, but I want to Oh, that's to right. That's right. Because you put your swag. I was like, so um, for people tuning in, um, I've always, I always wanted to do, there's an event called Noir at the Bar, which is fabulous. It's like it, but it's where people read from noir and dark uh, mysteries. And I always wanted to do it like, you know, cause they do it at Bowser they do it all over the town, town. And I always wanted to do a similar event, but for uh, lighter mysteries. So I uh, pitched to Kim Keeline, who was great, and she was the chair of uh, BoucherCon, which is the largest mystery convention in America. There are like 1,700 people in San Diego. But anyway, I pitched the idea of cozies and cocktails, and she was like, let's do it. So it was the inaugural event, and that's right, you were there, and I had a swag table, because what are we, if not swag givers outer for cozy authors? So, um, and it was, it was, and people, we had like eight, we all seven, cause someone couldn't come cause of the hurricane, but we had seven readers. And then we had like, we gave away like 25 books. So it was really fun. And I'll be doing it again in Nashville. With, I'm going to make some adjustments though. Okay. I'm I keep turning my head cause I'm trying to see which... Uh, it's it's backwards on camera, so it's kind of throwing me off. I was uh, you did a wonderful job. It was so nice that you did that. And I was going to say, I feel like Cozy Mysteries this year, like up the ante because yeah. Jennifer she did her own Cozy Mystery kind of spotlight too. And then Kate yeah. Carlisle was the very first Cozy Mystery honor, like guest honoree. I'm going, yes, cozy having their moment this year. <laughs> and apparently, they're they're you know the I think Kim and there were a lot of people who were really grateful. I think Kim too. Uh, Kate said people are coming up to her so yeah I mean it's it's not like that we need to it's just parody it's just making sure you know that the genre gets the same respect as the other genres 
So, mm -hmm. um, you have to do whatever it takes. Yeah, you totally. And my coffee read? Jen, Jen, you were going to say something. Oh, Jen. I was just going to say for my, so the Cozy's authors got different spotlights. And what I wanted to do was I invited uh, people who boost the cozy mystery genre for my spotlight. And so Angela, of course, was one of them. And so I, I just really feel like people need to be supported, like especially everyone who's doing podcasts and blogs and live streaming and all this. Yeah, yeah. It's just amazing, just this community and support. Yeah. And what's interesting, though, is that like, you know, not there's a, a, a there seems to be a general feeling that cozies are all funny, which is they're not and they don't have to be, you know, so it's like um, and and there's some really good cozies that are, you know, that are not dark at all, um, but they're, you know, they're not they're just like a great mystery. You know, so I feel like it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be, you, cozy authors shouldn't feel like, oh, I have to be funny. You know, that's what a cozy is. It's not. I mean, it's, you know, that's, oh, well, oh, those yeah. are funny books. I yeah. will say. Those I are funny say, books. You do make me happy. There might be, I always say they're like happy deaths, but like you, yes. you put a smile on my face. We've got the fun cat and she's adorable. Yeah. But like yeah. they do, they do have moments of, oh, wait a second. There's the gravitas here and you'll have yeah. me kind of going, what's going on? I was, you know, kind of upset and scared. Then I'm all happy and relaxed and laughing yeah. later. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yay. Yay. I'm looking at the, I'm reading, uh, I'm reading. Oh, this is cool. Tell us each about the new series. Well, I'll let you, I, I, of course, I'd be nosy and reading the questions, um, but I'll let you handle that. Oh, no. I mean, I was going to say, I kind of had this like loose format in mind. So I'll tell y'all, I mean, right. these wonderful ladies are already aware. So I was going to ask them to introduce themselves. We kind of like jumped right on in because I adore them. And it's like talking to old friends, even though I'm like, you're a star of the cozy genre. Like I still fangirl at them a little too hard sometimes. But Not I was going to ask them. <laughs> I was going to have you all tell everybody what your cozy mystery series is, if there's something new you just had released. So I'm going to kick it back over to you. Okay, Jen, you want to start? Because I'm a big mouth, so I'll give you some thought. <laughs> You're so funny. Oh, I think people are, oh, people are talking about loving the LA Nightmark series and the Vintage Cookbook Mystery series, Elle. So, yay. Well, mine's, okay, my latest series is this one, the LA Night Market Mysteries. It has two cousins, Yale and Celine Yi. They're opposite personality cousins, and they run a food stall at the local Los Angeles night market. So the first book in the series is called Death by Bubble Tea, and there they serve bubble tea snacks, but one of the customers winds up dead, so they're going to have to solve that mystery. And the second one um, that released in June is called Hot Pot Murder. You can see they're eating hot pot, sharing a meal, and they are actually eating hot pot with this local restaurant um, owners association, all like Asian American restaurant owners, and the president of that association dies, has a shocking fatal death at the hot pot murder, I mean hot pot, and so it's hot pot murder, and then the cousins are like, what happened? It's, you know, closed circle mystery, and then they have to figure out what's going on. Very cool. It's a great book. I it's over there somewhere in the sea of color, but it's I'm like nodding along because I don't want to say anything, but I'm like, and it's a five star read. Oh, <laughs> Everything she writes is a five star read, though, so I'm a little biased towards her. So I'm gonna. Just uh, I love everything she writes. I, everything Ellen writes too. I'm like, I'm just oh, add this auto buy. Like, I don't even read the book blurbs anymore when it comes to y'all. <laughs> you just end up in the cart. Funny. Well, uh, I will segue in. Uh, for those who don't know me, um, and uh, I am a uh, sitcom writer turned um, mystery author. I always love reading mysteries, and so when uh, my sitcom career began to slow take a turn down I thought well I'll try writing one and um, I wrote one that didn't sell but got me a grant with the, the Malice Domestic Grant and then I um, wrote one uh, Plantation Shutters which became the first book in my Cajun Country Mystery Series which uh, went to seven books and is still still has fans and I still love it oh look at that oh my gosh look at look at all me. Oh, those are pretty she was talking about her other one but she all but Jennifer also has another hey! series so I yes. have my little overlays ready to go I was very proud of myself oh, so oh, you should be proud those are gorgeous um and so uh and you know I, I hope to revisit that series in the future again but in the meantime uh I write the uh, catering hall mysteries which is inspired by my life as a girl and half Italian girl in Queens and my character literally lived where my nonna lived and she works at the um catering Hall where my uh, husband and I had our New York reception. Um, and I write that as Mary DeRico. And then I also write the um, vintage cookbook mysteries. And um, my latest is, oh, here was, oh, I, I 
did, I'm so smart. I put on one smart. side, I put Buy You Book Thief. This is the first book in the series. And uh, Wined and Died in New Orleans is the second. And um, and I currently, I just negotiated a deal with a new publisher, uh, Severn House. So in early 2025, I believe, um, uh, which seems like a long time, but really I've noticed the time zooms by now. Um, my uh, the, the third one will come out. I'm writing it right now. Right now it's French Quarter Fright Night, and it uh, takes place around Halloween. But next year, I'll also be introducing um, a new series that is the Golden Motel Mysteries, where a uh, a burned out sitcom writer, oh, who could that be, uh, buys a motel in Gold Rush Country. And um, I'm going to do something. I have I I don't have the the cover for the book yet, but I did have these little bears made up because there's a, this bear who wanders through the the series a little bit. It's not it's he's just peripheral. But his name is Toki the Bear. And um, he was named by guys who were doing an illegal grow in the past. Um, so that's why he's Toki the Bear. Um, but uh, so I have him over there. But what I may do is bend down. So, I, so I'm so i trying. I, I hit a lot of my desk stuff behind my back. But I love you all and I trust you all won't be horrified. I'm going to bend down and get the bear. And you're going to see all the crap on my desk behind me and just be kind that's all i can say i'll be hold on a sec i, I mean i have that moment of i can't say anything because the angle the bookcase behind me is lovely and color coded the floor has papers <laughs> it looks very messy okay. there's a dog that plays around on the floor with your on. treats you can tell okay so now you know my dirty little uh, my dirty little live stream secret that all everything is behind me that isn't on the floor. So um, I like having animal mascots for my series. So this was the little gator for the catering hall, and um, not for the catering hall for the Cajun countries. And then as you can see, um, what I if for this series, what is it? It's I see I don't know where my finger goes. A peacock. And what I love on this cover is that if you look up here, I said my fingers. There's a, she put a peacock there, which I think is fabulous. And so anyway, this is um, Toki the Bear. And he's wearing a little T-shirt with the logo, Golden Motel Mysteries. So cute. Aww. So, and uh, apologies for all the stuff behind me, but we're human. Oh no, my little cozy mystery brain's going into overdrive of, that's a very different cozy companion. I love it. Oh, yeah, can yeah. they include that as the logo for the motel on the book cover? All exactly. Right, like, you all the well, I, you know, I, so I was like, I, I was like, okay, well, I have these, these mascots for all my books, except the catering hall series, which takes place in New York. So mm -hmm. my joke, it, and it's kind of not a joke. I think it kind of is that the animal mascot for that is the pizza rat. So, <laughs> Do you, do you guys know about the pizza rat? My husband's in the, we're sharing an office. He's laughing. This is the pizza. rat that was like running with the pizza, the slice of pizza in the middle of like, what yes. was it, like alley or street or something? It was, it was like on 34th street. He was trying to go down, take it down. Like, a, and I felt so bad because he finally gave up. And I like, we were all so rooting for that rat. I was like, you know, and what's hilarious. I thought, oh, I wonder if there's like anything, you know, he's been memed or whatever. I know that. And I go to Etsy and of course there's like, pizza rat t-shirts and pins and you know so they're like we would have given him a slice <laughs> i know i feel like so bad i wanted to like jump into that video and tear up the pizza so he could eat it in little pieces but i'm sure he found plenty of other food i love that the i mean I, this is the whole thing right cozy mysteries we love our cozy companions we're all animal lovers yes. nothing can ever happen to said animals either that's i was going to ask later about some of the rules so for me as the reader one of my rules is nothing can happen to the animal <laughs> that's yeah. my mind mm -hmm. i actually um and then uh, eventually i'll shut up and let poor jen talk but um i <laughs> I, uh, in one of my, oh, I'm trying to remember which one, like you get so confused. I think it was occasion Christmas killing. Um, a dog, a little dog is kidnapped and yay, there it is. And, um, I think but, it's like, I don't know if you can see which shelf it's on, but it's up there. Yeah. There's, but what happened is it's, section, there's it's a very, over there. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. It's brief. But what I did was, you know, the, the dog on that, uh, is inspired. Or the cover is, was inspired by our own Basset Hound Rescue Lucy. And I let the dog be the rescuer. And because Lucy is a scent, you know, was a, a basset hounds or scent hounds. So, so the, so they, they're able to use their basset hound and she becomes the hero. Um, it's a he in the book, but he becomes, Gopher becomes the hero and tracks down the little doggy. So. 
I was going to say, I've seen a, there was another cozy mystery. I remember the animal went missing or she went, you know, into someone's backyard and got stuck there because she was locked in. But we can't hurt the animals. But yeah, like but having the animal save the day, that's my little cozy mystery heart going, oh, that's so great. Uh, yes. <laughs> and I remember that scene. <laughs> well, Jen, <laughs> you've got you've got a whole marshmallow is, you know, front and center. Yeah, I've got a whole sassy cat that actually sleuths <laughs> and it's a partner, like definitely a partner. If not the lead detective with me, that's Lee right. In those books. Yay, look at those. Oh, okay, yeah. So, if you don't know the series, it's about Mimi Lee. She's a pet groomer in Los Angeles. She runs a grooming salon called Hollywood. And so, she finds out that her new pet is a sassy cat and it can be telepathic and talks to her. And so, they actually go and solve cases together. And it actually, some of his talents are, are really useful in cracking open those cases. I have to say that if there is not, and I don't believe there is, because you probably did your research, a, a pet grooming facility in Los Angeles called Holly Wolf, that's a that's a crime. It's an absolute <laughs> crime. There must I, I literally want to train myself so I can open one. So great. I love the puns that you both have. My brain doesn't work in puns, but I appreciate them when I read a good one in print. But every title, I mean, even like gets a clue. It reminds me, I mean, there was that Disney Channel movie of the week where Lindsay Lohan and it had clue in the title and instantly you're drawn in. But even sassy cat, like I wouldn't think to say, oh, she's a sassy little cat. She's like, she's a cute kitten. <laughs> like I wouldn't know what to like how to phrase it so that it would sound more punny or cozy mystery. But both sassy cat is a great title that just pull you in. Well, you know, it's funny because um, when I worked on Just Shoot, I worked on the TV series Just Shoot Me. And often because I'd written for magazines, so that was a support job I had when I was a playwright, they would send me, like, let me work on the interstitials because the interstitials for the between scenes were magazine covers that had titles on them. And a lot of the magazine titles, you know, especially back then were were punny. So I would have all, I had so much fun because I came up, you know, like I remember one was emotional baggage and it was all about like, you know, handbags or something. Um, I wanted to do one. I never got to do. It was called who's sorry now about Indian fashion. So I never got to do that. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to remember it because there are some romance novels that have incorporated Indian culture into the titles. I'm like, I don't think I've seen anything quite like that yet. I'm like, that would be a great yeah. title. <laughs> I wish I love, right. I'm a big Bollywood fan. I love Bollywood dancing music. I'm fat. I love the Indian culture, but you know, it's not my culture. So unfortunately I can't write about it. I wouldn't do it justice. Oh no, I, Nisha Sharma is a romance author, and she's she had like my um my so called Bollywood life or something. Like she had a oh, wonderful oh. one, and, and the the girl was she was filming she was making a Bollywood movie, and the guy wanted to be a dancer in it or something. I, maybe I'm getting them confused because I read it such a long time ago. But you're making me remember her, and I'm like, oh, she's someone to recommend. <laughs> Great. Nice, but oh yeah, see, people are like, we want that title. <laughs> um, I did want to ask y'all because you are both very prolific when it comes to the genre, and I am curious what inspired you to pick up your first cozy mystery, or what inspired you to create and contribute to this subgenre that clearly has captured your heart because you keep contributing. So, like, what drew you to cozies, Jen? Should I start? Okay, yeah, you start. Um, I, I just really loved Cozy Mysteries. I love reading Ag Agatha Christie. My mom actually introduced me to Agatha Christie. And so we kind of like traded books back and forth. And so I think that was like the first kind of Cozy Mysteries that I read. Um, and then later on, I really got into the themed books. So, uh, you know, Joanne Flukes and then all the like all the desserts. I was like, ooh, that looks great. So then I went um, and kind of like read through those as well. And I just really loved, uh, I think the puzzle, first the puzzle element of it and like how to solve things. And then just secondarily, just the community, that sense of community and the sense of like, everything's all right in this community, even though there's a murder too, you know, it all resolves and everyone's like happy and friends and it's just, just nice to visit. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. I mean, I actually didn't even realize I was reading cozies and I, I like everyone else, um, you know, it was like the gateway is Nancy Drew, and then you segue into um, Agatha Christie, who I read like when I was discovered her at fourteen, and I just could not stop reading her because of that very. You know, I wanted to go to St. Mary Mead, and the thing I love about Agatha Christie is that she's much darker, a little darker, and much more acerbic, I think, than she gets credit for. Um, you know, everyone thinks it's just and and Jane Marple has like 
such a dark view of life. And I love that because it's, it's juxtaposed against this, you know, this um, kind of bucolic setting, but it's, you know, what lies beneath, as they say. And so, and I, and I didn't even realize I was reading cozies until I, you know, until I started kind of writing them. And I think I wrote what I liked, like what you're saying, it's, it's, I don't want to read really dark, painful stuff. There's so much of that in the world. You know, what's great about cozies is you do get a community and a lovely, it's like taking a little vacation, you know, and justice is served and there's no horrible violence. I mean, once I had a, a kid, I didn't want to read about children who mm -hmm. suffered or, you know, or someone who's writing about, you know, so much of there are so often it's like some teenage girls who are, you know, brutalized and like, oh, I can't read that. I don't want to. So, um, you know, so, and, you know, in the touch of, and also for me, because like my background, you know, my, my favorite thing is when I, and I, as a playwright, I used to love this is when I can make people like choke up and also laugh within the same experience. Um, you know, and I, I don't always do that as much in my books, but like, I think with some of my Cajun countries, I got those moments, but you know, the heart too, humor and heart. I, I love that. I like writing that. I like reading it. Well, you brought up Agatha Christie and it is her birthday, which is why we're having Cozy Mystery Day. We're honoring her. She's the creator of this subgenre. So Amy Marie has a question. She wants to know what your favorite, favorite Agatha Christie mystery is. And I think that's a great question. I, I'll jump right in because I, I can answer this very quickly. Sleeping Murder. I love Sleeping Murder because it it has the a clue that's from Duchess of Malfi, which is one of my favorite plays, and and I love this the very and, and Agatha Christie used some of the same plots. Um, there's uh, Dead Man's Folly and and um, Sleeping Murder both have a very similar, you know motivation for murder um but i loved you know that the young woman walks in and, and swears she's been there before um remembers where things are but why didn't make any sense and so the mystery of that unfolding and then cover um cover her face my eyes i'm trying to remember she died young and she hears us in a theater and screams um so i love that jen what about you mm -hmm. so I kind of have two answers to this. And it, I think it's because of sentimental reasons. Like the, It's like the first ones that I read. So actually, the first thing I ever read was Mousetrap, and so, which is totally like, and in the play format. Yeah. So um, imagine getting just drawn in. I was like, am I going to enjoy this? Because I, I don't usually read plays. And then totally got drawn in. Of course, it's like super, I mean, it's darker, right? And so, but it's so... It was so fascinating. So definitely that. Uh, and then also um, Murder at the Vicarage because I, that was one of the first like book format ones that yeah. I, I read. And so that kind of has a special place in my heart. Well, you know, it's so interesting because and then where there were and then there were none is a really dark book. Mm. And you can tell how dark it is because people people keep using, you know, borrowing the structure um, for, uh, you know, for for modern, like I, several readers and the, you know, and I was an homage to, uh, and then there were none. So, um, so yeah. yeah. I'm not even sure, you know, I wonder if Agatha Christie, cause you know, Louise Penny gets very resistant. Like, no, no, it's just because, you know, there's something magical about three bides. It's not a cozy, it's not a cozy and it's not. Um, and I wonder how Agatha Christie would feel if, you know, she probably would be happy to take the checks. <laughs> I, I've read a lot about her, and she was often in debt because the English tax taxes were so taxes were so punishing. Oh, it looks like somebody else with the murder at the vicarage. Oh. That, and that was the first Miss Marple. So I have to say that one definitely is a special special title. <laughs> and yeah. I love you guys are Agatha Christie fans on Agatha's birthday. I mean, we have little Agatha, the logo around here somewhere is a sticker. Of course, you had to have a logo and a mascot named Agatha, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I was answering a question um, uh, that um, if anyone is really an Agatha Christie fan, I, Ruth, I hope Ruth Bailing is on this because I bought some. Ruth Bailing is a reader. We've become very good friends. We both needlepoint and she's like kind of my needlepoint guru. Um, and they were the uh, the Royal Needlepoint Society this year created a needlepoint canvas of Dame Agatha. And that was and I don't, shh, don't tell her. 
but I bought it for her. Oh, nice <laughs> secret. So I want to step in and and do like a little plug because we, Ella and I blog on Chicks on the Case, chicksonthecase.com. And so our little chick mascot is called Agatha, you know, like, you know, Agatha, like Agatha, Agatha Chicksy. Agatha Chicksy. That's right. Yes. And I think I think Tammy Barker, Tammy Barker named her, right? Didn't she win the contest? It's been a while. I think it's been a while. Yeah. So. So. Oh no! I see now. I have to find another cozy companion design that I or come up with a new sort of design. Talk to the graphic artist. As you can tell, I'm trying not to give away info because I am working on it. But I'm like, we got to have one that's named Christy too. So we have one that's Agatha, another one named Christy. Oh, Maybe good. Christy you can go like Moriarty, T E A. Have a little fun Ooh. with it. <laughs> or Christy, nice. like a teacup. Exactly. Ooh. Well, I mean, I, I forget who who named who. One of the readers came up with Moriarty T E A. So, I'm like, if we can do oh. some Christy, that would also kind of be cute. But I forget to give them credit. Like, I don't know who the name is, but I give them all the credit because I still love Moriarty. That makes me so happy. It's very cool. <laughs> nice. Oh yes, Depp. So I finally revealed a new cozy companion. And so this is kind of going to leeway into one of the subsequent questions about elements that we look for. But yes, I did reveal one of our new cozy companions, Depp from Deputy Donuts, Ginger Bolton. I had this oh. and it came out so cute. So I was very happy to reveal. I don't have the colored design but you can see the little <gasps> graphic so Aww. you can go see the colored version over on instagram but it came out really really cute i'm always That's working. adorable <laughs> did you do that so i there's a graphic designer i found on fiverr who i absolutely love and it she cannot leave that platform and if she does she has to tell me where to find her because i will follow her like whichever platform you use i will hire you via that platform or if you just want to have paypal i'll do that for you because you're amazing um she designed it she's so talented you can tell like i'm trying not to give too much away because she is a little bit of a different design compared to the um moriarty layout because it's a little bit more vector uh, adobe whereas this one has a little bit more kind of um cartoon like depth to it with the uh, details so i love her and you're gonna see some more of her stuff during 12 days of cozies but oh, yeah fantastic. i really love like the design she came up with the little donut like made me so happy <laughs> and yes, yeah, we'll stickers at some point they're gonna have Aww. to happen they're always stickers i think the last batch was our little um clue from the uh paws and claws read along so this was the last batch of stickers i had printed <laughs> But there's always. Hey, sorry, uh, my my one of our lights is strobing, and my husband was trying to fix it. So, um, so yeah, I may go and I may go dark soon. <laughs> you have a little dance party over there. Yeah, <laughs> you're like I'm just going away. You're like so. things happen. <laughs> See, we were talking about the companions and someone else mentioned they saw that they found a cat in a cozy and they were sold. So I am curious what you think of when it comes to cozies because again agatha is much darker but she has that clo like that closed community she has the off the page murder so even if there is violence it's not necessarily yeah. on the page stabbings yes. so what do you consider to make things a cozy mystery or what and you even said you didn't realize you were writing a cozy at first then you're going oh this is the subgenre it falls into and this is my yeah. writing style so i'm just curious when you when you think cozy mystery sort of what comes to mind well um I will real as I was uh, plotting the third um, vintage cookbook mystery. I realized that in all three of my, oh sorry, I'm waving goodbye to my toy. All three of my series, I have managed to have my protagonist and their love interest consummate the relationship between books, so I don't have to write it. Um, which uh, so I'm really bad at writing sex. I don't, I you know, I can't. Um, I just not my thing. So, so I think it's, I think there's a lot off the page. There's that's off the page. The violence is off the page. Um, you know, the, a puzzle, an amateur sleuth to me, that's, that's very part of it. Um, uh, a cast of characters. I always say it's like the TV show castle, which my husband used to say that ABC where the show, the nation, the st station where the show ran stood for always broadcasting castle. Cause every time we turn on the TV, it seemed to be on, um, you know, where you have a case of the week, but you also have the ongoing relationships of the main characters. Um, so I think that's essential, um, an appealing location, you know, all that is, um, I love one of my favorite, if not my favorite genres, actually historical mysteries, because they take me to a time and place I cannot go to. So I get to live through uh, the author and the, the mystery. Jen, what do you think? Yeah. 
Um, I agree with your point. Um, and then I, I guess I would add to one one off the page, which, which is the swearing or cussing. Um, yes. And then on the page, I would say just having like the amateur sleuth, someone who's just like an everyday person, and that individual has agency. And they're the ones like yes. really going after things and, and being able to, to solve the case, really. So it's kind of like an empowering main character, which I appreciate in Cozy Mysteries. Yes, and I also think that um, th what I try to do is is whatever they do in their real life, I make sure they do it because there is a complaint that people have like stores that are never open or like how do these people support yes. themselves? You know, because they're always off solving mysteries. So I do try to really make them committed to their chosen career, um, but also something about what they do allows them to be good at amateur sleuthing. Um, you know, for uh, for for. Mia in the catering hall mystery. Well, her dad is is a reformed mobster. He's you know running a, a business as legit business. So I say she understands the criminal mind because she grew up with it. Um, you know, in in the Cajun country mysteries, uh, Maggie is an artist, and her artistic ability. You know, being an artist, she sees things that other people might miss. Um, and vintage cookbook. You know, uh, Ricky's ability to mine and, and suss out deals and get when people, you know, tap into when people are maybe not are lying to her or mislead, trying to mislead her on the value of something, you know, that also comes in handy as a skill. That's so true. I was, I was making little notes as y'all were talking. I loved it when you said, first, I mean, I'm, there are multiple subsequent questions that I have to ask. I mean, but I also have to just say, I love that you said the protagonist has agency. And I think that is something that yeah. Why your books will hit the mark where sometimes I'll read a code and I'm going, they're not even looking, they're not sleuthing. They just stumbled yeah. on the clue and it's solved. I'm going, this isn't fun. <laughs> so I, I think like, how important that word agency, like that just really stay. I'm going, that is a great way of phrasing it and looking at it like they have agency. Well, they, it is a great way to put it. The one thing that makes me a little crazy is when I read a cozy where at the end the person is like, someone's pointing a gun at them, like, it's you. It's like, no that your whole job was to figure it out. You know, you had one job to do and that was to to ID the the killer. So, you know, don't don't suddenly like if someone's pointing the, the, what did I waste why did I read 300 pages for you to like figure it out only when someone's, you know, mm -hmm. holding a knife to your neck. I also love it when it's a character who had one line in chapter 3 and like yeah. oh, mm -hmm. how was I supposed to solve this one? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's a fun moment. But yeah. I, I do have to ask, because you said historical mystery, is, is there a favorite author or title that you recommend, aside from Agatha Christie? As soon as you said it, my thought was uh, Rice Bowen. So I was like, who is her favorite? <laughs> oh, well, historicals, I mean, I, I, I swear, I, it's so hard to, you know, I always hate, like, pinpoint. I mean, I really love Alyssa Maxwell's um, series, The Gilded Newport, because I love Newport, and I love those big houses. I think they're fascinating. Um, uh, I read so many, it's just hard to keep track i mean karen auden i mean honestly if you just look at the nominees for uh the awards you know Susie calkins i mean there are just so many great you know uh, mariah fredericks i mean i could just go on and on in terms of the historicals and same for you know arjan i mean all the the authors on our chicks on the case are wonderful and i also belong to cozy mystery crew uh, a facebook group where there are a dozen cozy authors and you know all of them are if you like the genre you know they're all solid really good writers. Well, something else that kind of caught my attention was when you're talking about the amateur sleuther, it's, that's something that I am always kind of fascinated with because even if they have a law enforcement background or connection, they themselves are not currently on the police force. I always think of Adrian Monk where he's now kind of the private eye consultant with elementary. Sherlock is the consulting detective or when I, when you're mentioning the white, he made me think of white collar where he was the criminal. Now he's helping them catch them. So right. something interesting about that where I'm like, you can be close to law enforcement, but like you're just a hair away in time, kind of like almost, but not quite. I think it's also important to explain without making the police dumb or, you know, to give solid reasons why it's, why this sooth can do, you know, to make it somewhat believable, you know, a little believable, right, Jen? Yeah, you know, like a little I, bit. Yeah, a little. <laughs> like in the Go on. We you want to respect. Talk. No, I was going to say, yes. you're right. We want to respect, like, the police or the detectives, whoever's actually investigating. But there is something special about having that 
amateur yeah. students also like come on board. And also the amateur students plus their community. So it's not necessarily just yes. that sleuth, right? You have like your sidekicks and all your friends in the community. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely. That's true. And, you know, like, well, in the Cajun country, the um, the police, uh, the chief of police has a longstanding 150 year old grudge against a family. So, you know, that's why he's not helpful. And and then in the, um, you know, in my other two series, they take place actually in cities and especially like NOPD. I mean, you know, it's it's easy to write that they're overwhelmed and and whatever case is is paramount for the for the my sleuth, my protagonist can fall to the bottom of priorities for them. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's an or LA with you, Jen. You know, yeah. Sometimes yeah. I'm just like too much paperwork. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, which is real. You know, you want to because I mean, we do like you were saying. We have tremendous respect. I mean, the people who really do the heavy lifting, it's a hard job. I mean, very hard and dangerous. So, oh no, I think I that I appreciate the approach of giving the police the credit of, yes, they're intelligent, but they're just not solving this mystery. This is, it's okay for our sleuth to do it because they're doing something that's not on the police radar. I yeah. appreciate that so much more than, oh, well, it's totally you because you found the body and that's literally yeah. the only reason I'm looking at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always questionable. But you just, one of the things it kind of reminds me of is that seems to be one of the ways of, okay, this is why we're gonna have a love interest detective because they're talking about the mm -hmm. case or, she's with him if our female is just, you know the there's a female oh she's with him when this stumbles upon and now her interest is peaked and she's going to fall into the mystery well and you know it's interesting you bring that up sorry to, but i was going to say that that you know it, the things we expect in in cozies can also be seen as tropes mm -hmm. and when i wrote the cajun countries i again i said i i didn't even know uh, you know i was really new to the forum and so i have a love interest as a detective and i really didn't realize that was a trope so um, I made an effort after that for my other series for the love interest not to be uh, some in law enforcement. But what's interesting is that I had so much fun. It's a female detective in the vintage cookbook mysteries. Um, and I had so much fun. And she was, the character was really based on, on a couple, when I did the Citizens Police Academy in Los Angeles, you know, a couple of women spoke and they were, they're, personalities I tried to Im imbue um, the detective in that series with. And so I put them together and people are like, oh, is that her love interest? Because, you know, and I was like, because they thought that the two had so much chemistry, these two women that people thought that the Nina was, was, uh, was Ricky's love interest. Yeah. I try not to do the love interest of the, that's just because it's been done so many times yeah. now. I also try to stay away from like, love triangles oh yeah well, yeah because i also maybe because it's hard for me <laughs> to write it too but just because that happens a lot sometimes yeah and for me, like, like another reason why i love this woman because i've told them i've mentioned to the book club repeatedly love triangles are my least favorite thing to read i'm like and now you understand my my appreciation of this woman over here <laughs> well you know it's so funny because i feel exactly the same way partly and it's and this is like sour grapes it's like, it's so hard to date in Los Angeles anyway. Mm -hmm. I was so lucky to find one guy that when people are like, oh, I don't know who I love him. Like, I just get kind of resentful. It's like, how do you end up having two great people? Where do you live where you can just like have two fabulous men that you just can't decide who to choose between? I want to live. Well, I don't I know where. Different. It's in Lake Eden, Minnesota. <laughs> with, with Norman. And my husband's like, oh, you just skated past that one. <laughs> I know the exact location of the world's longest cozy mystery love triangle. I know. Uh, but, you know, some people do it really well. Like Libby Klein oh, had yeah. one in her series. I love her series. It's hilarious, you know, and it's, it's, and she really carried it off. So, um, but yeah. Are there any other tropes aside from the love triangle or, I mean, I, again, you wrote, I liked your relationship with the detective, but is there another trope or theme? You're like, oh, we've had enough of these in cozies. Or there's a trope or theme you're going, I need all of this in every single cozy forever. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I like puns, so I'm sorry, but I just keep adding the puns in. Like, oh, I get to make another pun or I get to make stores with punny names. That's great. Yeah, but I know I, some people are like, oh, another pun, huh? <laughs> I actually don't have my, when you look at all my titles, there aren't that, my favorite, some of them I come up with, some of them I don't come up with, some are a real stretch and a reach and hard to come up with, but the one title that I'm super proud of was Long Island Iced Tina, 
And and my editor was on the fence about it. And I was like, no, no, you have to use this title. And of course, it, people were like, I love that title. <laughs> Making the, the pun is just, that speaks to my heart as my little cozy mystery reader over here. I love the puns. They make me so happy. They make me smile. I mean, even just holding up like, I, again, I loved that movie with Hugh Grant where I'm like, oh, four yeah. weddings and a funeral. Like, even when you just slip in like a different word there, it makes me happy. <laughs> Can I tell you a very funny story about that title? Ooh. Okay, well, I think it's funny. Um, so, so, uh, so four party, four, four parties and a funeral, right? That's the title. Mm -hmm. In my head, as I was writing the draft, I got the title confused and I thought it was four funerals and a party. So I reached the end towards the end of the book and I'm like, Oh my God, I only have one funeral. What am I going to do? It doesn't leave, it's wrong. So I, you won't like this Angela, but I, I did kill off three goldfish. And so there is a, uh, that, and it's really lovely that there is um, a family that's having a memorial, their six-year-old son, three of his goldfish passed away. And so they're having a memorial for the goldfish. And so, um, you know, so it's very sensitive and it creates a moment with Mia's boyfriend, her secret boyfriend, because she wasn't there on Pablo, but that leads to a really wonder, you know, really emotional monologue on his part. And so I write all this and I'm so happy <laughs> and I'm like, and then I realized I had the title wrong. It wasn't four funerals in a party. It was four parties in a funeral. But I had embedded this so much into like, it led to this transitional moment. So I couldn't take it out. So I explained that to my editor and he laughed. He thought it was hilarious. So anyway, when you get, if you read that book, when you, now you'll know when you get to that, that section, you'll laugh because you'll go, oh, this is what Ellen F. up her own title. <laughs> well, it's great. They kept your title, L. <laughs> Sometimes they don't. I, Sorry, no, was it, I, someone else, I, I'm in this little support group and someone else came up with it. I take no credit for the title. <laughs> uh, not at all. I, clearly. And I couldn't even remember what it was. I mean, I am curious. So it's funny that you, you're going, oh, I'm going to apologize for this. The goldfish didn't register on my radar. Like, you know, cozy mystery. This is something you shouldn't be doing. Controversial moment. Like that one didn't register. The goldfish was okay. I'm like, okay. for some reason, the goldfish lost. I mean, again, I always feel the animal losses. And my mother always had beta fish growing up. So like when it comes to fish, even then, I'll, I will admit that there is a mystery series where she has a fish and I am genuinely concerned about said fish because she's had it for what, three books now? I don't oh, know. I don't really know. We're just going to have to have magical realism with that. Um, <laughs> but I think you can kind of get away with those little baby ones because it's also yeah. not the sleuthers animal. I think no, and it's very that. peripheral. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really about the family, and it's really actually very sweet because the family is respecting their son's, you know, loss by doing this event for him. Um, so it's very respectful, but like. <laughs> When I realized I had the title wrong. Well, you know, sometimes you said we're prolific. I'll tell you another thing I did. Um, Drew uh, Ann Love is is one of this year one of Mystery's most wonderful supporters and generous, and she's got a fabulous site. If you don't know, called Drew's Book Musings, and um, and we get to blog for it and you know do guest posts. And I wrote this guest post that I absolutely loved. I was so excited for the release of Four Parties of a Funeral, and it goes up, and I'm like, oh, it's such a good post. And I realized I'd written it about the wrong book. I'd written it about the book that's coming out about the Witless Protection Program, the fifth book in the series. Because what happened when I wrote that book, I, I realized that my characters go from New York to Miami, Miami to Los Angeles, and then Los Angeles to New York, and they do it all in 24 hours. And, you know, because I've been traveling a lot lately, when I realized you could do this, I was like, oh my God, that's so in, you know, I, of course, thought it was fascinating. So I wrote this whole blog post and, and I had to break it to Drew <laughs> and it published and was out and people were commenting and it was like, Oh my God, it's the wrong book. Oh. Hysterical though, because you live in the world that you're writing. So it, yes. I understand mm -hmm. it could be hard to differentiate, but that actually bleeds into one of my other questions. This dovetails perfectly where if there's a certain character or scene that one that you've written that you're just going, I love this character. I love this moment because you have written, both of you have written quite a few stories set with different characters and everything else. So I'm curious between the two of you, if you have your favorite characters or moments. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? So I have two answers to this. So one is, I kind of like my side characters, even though the like protagonist gets top billing sometimes. I'm like, this character is great. Like in the Sassy Cat, it's it's 
I should say it's a marshmallow because, you know, he, his name isn't actually on the cover. It's a Mimi Lee this, Mimi Lee, you know, Mimi Lee gets a coup, Mimi Lee reads between the lines, Mimi Lee cracks the code. So the sidekicks are the side amazing. characters. And <laughs> it's amazingly huge on that first cover. Um, so the sidekicks, and then also, you know, it's, it's so hard to choose. I feel like I always like the latest book and the latest character, right? Mm -hmm. So right now I'm actually working on a, a new series for next year. It's the Magical Fortune Cookie series. And so it has like a mother-daughter relationship and they own this Chinese bakery. And the pastries are magical. They bring joy and happiness. Um, and the daughter, Felic Felicity, is the main character. So I, I really love writing that world because it's like, you've got the mystery, but then you've got the touch of magic. She has fortune cookies that like can actually have predictions that come true. So anything that I'm currently working on, I feel like becomes my favorite. I love that. I, that's yours. I can't wait to read it. It sounds wonderful. Um, you know, it's interesting because like you, when you create a, a, the template for a series, you know, you create people. It's like for me, cause I wrote a lot of pilots for, you know, being in LA and writing for TV, I've written a lot of pilots and I use a lot of what I learned doing that. And when I'm uh, doing a proposal for a series and when I'm breaking the, the bones of a series. Um, but what you find as you're writing it, and this is true, and you can look at TV shows and see it too, that characters you don't expect to, to pop up and develop. Like I was talking about Nina, the detective. Well, she's become so much fun to write for in that series that I really look for opportunities to put her and Ricky together or to have her poke Ricky. She loves to, to poke her, um, you know, because Ricky's a little, still a little, oh, it's a detective. Oh, what do I do? I'll make sure I don't, you know, because I think, what would I do if I was being interviewed for a minute? I'd be very nervous. Um, and, but with the, but with the Cajun countries, I created, um, a gay nail who's inspired by a real friend of mine, uh, as a sidekick. But as I wrote this series, Grand Mare became so much fun to write that she kind of, um, poor gay nail. I, I finally gave Gaynell a whole, you know, made her a suspect and gave her basically a kind of a whole book to revolve around her because I felt so bad because she was taking such a back seat to Ron Mayer. And um, and in the catering halls, I love Cookie. I, I mean, not Cookie. That's in my other series. I love Cookie in the Vintage Cookbook, but I love Cammy. Oh, by the way, one other dumb thing I did is I named my characters. Um, so in the Cajun countries, it's the protagonist is Maggie. And in the catering hall, uh, the protagonist is Mia. And, and I was very proud of myself because I because in the first uh, catering hall, uh, Maggie gets out of bed instead of media, Mia to show you how I confuse the names. And I thought, well, Ricky and Mia is the protagonist in the vintage cookbook, but her real name is Miracle. So I named all my characters with names beginning with M's. Well, you are, you do have Maria Dorico. The M is pro it's there. <laughs> It's my nonna, my late nonna's maiden name. I took that as my pen name. But so that's another dumb thing I did. But yeah, I really love writing uh, Cammy, who are dog, I think Cammy now, our new doggy, um, because she, her style, and this reminded me, she was kind of inspired by my cousins and that she had, and who, of course, morphed, but they had like, like a lot of people, uh, queens, and I, and so, and who was it? Sonia might know this too, that like there was a lot of, there are a lot of women who like the 80s were their time. They love the hair. They love the clothes. They love the sparkly. And if you go there now, that's what they're wearing. That's how they're dressing. Um, so, and Cammy is like unapologetic, you know? Yeah, this is me. Oh, wait, I had the one. It's so Donna actually has a question. Where do you get your ideas for your mysteries? And I think that's a fabulous question because again, you're both prolific. You have very different mysteries that you have to count for each and every single book. The fact that you have to come up with all these different mysteries, I'm curious as well. Jen, you go. I want to know what you do. I, <laughs> I don't know what you do, but um, <laughs> so for the, well, the series concept, I would say it just comes from, I just brainstorm. And I even with the fortune cookie series, I was brainstorming. It was so funny because I had this long list of like a paragraphs, a description of these like different mystery ideas. And then I had like a one sentence about or, you know, there could be this pastry shop and there's like magical fortune cookies. And then my agent's like, that's the one. <laughs> expand. And I was like, oh, okay. So now I'm going to expand on that. Um, and then I guess for the individual mysteries, I try to 
I, I try to find different ways to murder people. That sounds like kind of, <laughs> that sounds kind of horrible. Like I'd be on a, you know, search list. For, <laughs> but um, I, I kind of like having different ways of people dying and then different casts of characters. I, I love like making the cast. And so I uh, often will spend a lot of time doing the character profiles and trying to figure out, ooh, what kind of different personalities can I add to this book? Um, and for me, my series, uh, you know, they were like the, the catering hall was inspired, inspired by my, uh, the Cajun country was inspired by my love of Cajun country, which developed when I was at Tulane. And then my husband and I in the late nineties spent a night at a plantation um, that was hosting, it was a no host. So the people who, 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 who owned the place weren't there, which was odd because it was very, and then there were none because you're there with strangers um, and and there's this wait staff helping you. So that was uh, inspired that. And the catering halls were inspired by my life. I, you know, two cousins growing up ran catering halls in Astoria, the Astoria uh, Manor, at least uh, Astoria Manor and, um, and the Grand Bay Marina. And um, so, you know, I kind of thought, well, is there should be a series if there isn't one about that. And then I worked as a cater waiter for Martha Stewart when she was just starting out. Um, if you if people watching, if you have the original one of the original uh, editions of um, entertaining, you'll find me standing next to Martha in a picture on page 29. Um, so I was able to tap into my memories of that. Um, and then with the vintage cookbook, I collect vintage cookbooks. So that inspired that. In terms of individual stories, it can come from life. It can come from um, it come from stuff on the internet. I mean, I read a story about these guys who had bought, built bought a summer home, an old summer home in upstate New York, and they found these bottles of whiskey dating back to the a hundred years under in the crawl space put there during prohibition. So that inspired um, the plot of. Uh, of wind and die. I just read, uh, saw a picture um, on Instagram, one of the people I follow in New Orleans of what she called the spite house. And I've heard of spite houses and it's this like really tiny thin house, um, you know, in the middle of, it's like this. And so I really like, oh, I love that. I have to use a spike house, a spite house at a future, future mystery. Well, there's another question from, I'm just going to say AGL, I, if it's not initials, but AGL wants to know if you are pansters or plotters. <laughs> L is a plotter. I'm kind of in between. I'm like a little flashlighter. So I, I do the overall and then I, I kind of take it scene by scene and have it kind of grow from there. But I know like I'm in awe of Ellen because she has these like pages and pages. <laughs> So I do, structure. but but I will say that that I used I joked once I said I'm 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 pantsing an outline. Does that make me apply? <laughs> um, but I I so someone once referred, said, oh your outlines are like your first drafts, and that was super true because my outlines are like I'm working on right now. It's almost thirty pages, single spaced, and I broke it into chapters. But it never stays. I mean, like the chapters morph, and I discover things as I write. Um, as someone I saw, do you ever change your murderer? For me, so far I have not. Um, even if I've added new characters, though, one of my favorite characters to write in the Catering Hill Mysteries is Terry Fuoco, this annoying but fun, annoying reporter. She didn't exist in the outline for the first for Here Comes a Body, the first Catering Hall murder. As I was writing the draft, I thought I'm missing something. My character needs an, uh, a nemesis. Um, and so I came up with Terry on the fly. So I call it a fluid outline because it really will evolve and morph as I write it. But I also like the idea of thinking of it as a first draft. I was looking, I think someone else asked about you changing your murder or your victim. There was a, there's another question above. I was trying to find it, but again, it's so hard to keep up with the comments. I know. Mm. Jen, yeah, do I you, have you ever changed? What about you? I've never changed my victim, but I've definitely changed the murderer. And really? sometimes they'll be like, oh wait, this makes more sense, you know? And, and so I've definitely done that a couple of times. I think it's easier to do if you pants than if you plot. Cause yeah. if you plot, you're really kind of laying things out in a big way. So, so yeah, the bones I think really s stick in my, uh, because of my outlines. I turned into synopsis and everything. Sometimes it, it, it like changes as I yeah. write it. Um, and sometimes it just is a little bit of a tweak. Like it'll be like, oh, the motive is slightly different. 
Well, it's funny because one of my editors, uh, they require Kensington requires an outline. And for me, it's like, yes, I get to do it. And other people are like, oh, no, no, what are we going to do? I can't do an outline. And then they say, and it's never the same as what I turn in. I'm like with me, no, it's very similar. I'm always curious about that. Whenever they say there's an editor who requires an outline, I'm going, is that your process though? <laughs> I always kind of have I that. I got it. For me, it is. I'm lucky. <laughs> Although I am curious, like you said, 30 pages, single space, that has to be what, 20,000 words or something? Yeah, it's, a, it's uh, this particular one is about 18,000 words. I, I'm, I'm very impressed with myself. I was that close, but that's yeah, a lot of words. Well done. <laughs> well done. That's a lot of words for just a draft, though. I'm like, you're already, what, a fourth of the way there almost? <laughs> One fifth, maybe? Yeah, yeah, sometimes, though, it's, like, like scary. Like, with Long Island Tina, yeah, I was, like, like my like draft, draft was so short. I had, And then, of course, they say, just throw in another body. So I, I didn't quite do that, but I, I did have to, like... I There was... Um, I, I had a subsequent question. I think someone above had something similar. But it was, like, is there something you like to incorporate into your mysteries? And I think we kind of touched on that when you had the cozy companion. But is there something you're going... I like adding this or this is something about the setting where I always make sure I make note of that. So I was curious because again, you're both very prolific. So I'm like, what are the running themes or running sort of, are there any, you know, hidden Easter egg sort of things? I, I do. I definitely incorporate um, heritage in mine. It's a lot of culture. Sometimes that comes out in food and, and maybe that's because I, so from life experience, we owned a family restaurant Chinese, that served Chinese food. And so I definitely incorporate that in, these LA night market mysteries. Um, and I, I like to kind of weave it in no matter if it's food or if it's just um, perspective on things. I also like to have a lot of family in mind. So you often see different relatives pop in and out or they just have close ties to just different family members. So that's definitely things that I like to put in. I I realized and I got a little nervous about it that, that two of my series and a little bit less with a vintage cookbook um, had a relationship between uh, a younger woman, a woman in her early thirties and an older woman, a, gra a grandmother age. And what I kind of realized is like, I thought, Oh, am I repeating myself? Um, but it's like you said about family. And I kind of realized that it's me writing a little bit about my mother. Um, Cause I'm very close to my mom. She's, she's 96 and a half and still sharp. Um, and still funny and smart and witty. And, and so I think I, I kind of honor her by creating these characters. And because, you know, my care, because my ca characters tend to be on the younger side, um, they can't, you know, it's not their mother, it has to be their grandmother. <laughs> so, um, but you know, my, it's funny because in the, in the Golden Motel mysteries, and this is real, that um, my protagonist is pushing, she's almost four, she's 39. And one of the things that propels her out of TV is that she learns that um, you, you are eligible for the Career Longevity Guild in the Writers Guild at, at 40. Um, and the, that's a nice Career Longevity Committee is a very nice name for too old to work. <laughs> so, so she's like, wah! Um, but I think, and I also setting, I mean, I think because I wrote dialogue and scripts for so long, one thing I really love to do is create a sense of place. You know, I want people to feel like they're there when they're reading my books, that they're in New York and, and they're in New Orleans or they're in Cajun country, or they'll be in, you know, Gold Rush country or near Yosemite. I kind of, Californians are going to read this series, go, what this, uh, where is this person? This is Because I kind of mash up two areas. I had to warn. It should come with a warning to all Californians. I actually do suspension of geog yeah. like geographical yeah. Just <laughs> geographical understanding. Yes. Right. That's so cute, though. Um, you did mention some other cozy mysteries previously, and there are people in the comments who were mentioning recommendations. And y'all are both very you're you're both writing a lot, but you also recommend books a lot. So I am curious if there's a cozy mystery you recommend. Or I, I always love these. If you enjoy this, then you'll enjoy this book over here. If there's a, if you enjoy this book, you'll be reading this. <laughs> if you have one of those. Um, I, I always feel bad point. I, that's why I think I've already, you know, I think my fellow, my fellow, ch our fellow chicks are wonderful writers. Mm -hmm. the, the Cozy Mystery Crew is one. Someone I saw that someone mentioned um, a Valerie Burns series. Mm -hmm. I do love her mystery bookshop because she does two. She has two series in one. What's you know, that's a delicious thing. Uh, and she does it very well. So I really enjoy that. I mean, 
you know, I don't know about Jen, but I read so prolifically, I can barely remember what I read yesterday. And of course, any historical, you know, I love the historicals. Yeah, um, it's hard. It's really hard because I read so much and also because our friends write. So then it's like, yes. who do you recommend? Um, but definitely uh, Chicks, Chicks on the Case. Mm -hmm. So anyone there. Uh, I'm, I'm also part of Crime Writers of Color. So if you go to, yeah, crimewritersofcolor.com and they have this little um, thing link that you could click on upcoming books. So any of those authors are, are generally, you know, great. Yeah, there's some great authors like that, Raquel Reyes and, and uh, Mia Man Ansala and, you know, some really wonderful authors and who are writing, you know, the genre there. Mm -hmm. So is that typically how you find your cozy mystery reads? Your friends are saying, hey, I have a book coming out or, oh, I check over on this web page pretty consistently. I'm just curious if you have a go-to place for your recommendations or how you stumble across your next cozy mystery read. I think Drew's, you know, Drew's site, mm -hmm. um, just also being in the community. I mean, I know I also get asked to blur books and so I'll read stuff and describe that way. Same. Um, I, yeah. I was gonna say the early reads from the arcs and then friends. Um, I mean, I look at lists too. So I guess if yeah. things are nominated. Oh, and I do want to the plug Alexia Gordon, even though I, um, she's not here right now as, a, you know, an author to follow. She's yes. fabulous. Next week is the premiere of her Murder and G Major movie yeah. adaptation. So I've already marked my calendar for that. That's I've been fantastic. trying to figure out I'm going to be in DC, so I'm not going to have the physical TV. Yeah. So like, Can I stream it on the computer? How do I stream it? So I'm already looking into things to prepare for next week. <laughs> But yeah, I, I was looking, trying to figure out, like, did she email? Is she an Instagram? So maybe she'll pop up. Maybe she'll say hi another time. But she is a fabulous author. I always love her books and recommend them. But I love, I was just trying to make sure. Yeah, she's no no comment yet. Maybe she's just having internet problems. Yeah, she might. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. She's great. I, I love Alexia. Her series is wonderful. So, um, and and she also has a podcast that's that really is a great addition to the cozy community. Um, it's wonderful. She does a great job. Yes. Winter chat. I went, like I, I was trying to make sure I, every so often I want to invert them. Like, no, 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 it's that way. <laughs> yeah. Say that again. It's the co it's cozy corner chat. Right. I want you to say cozy chat corner, like yes, cozy corner chat. chat. No, 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 it's cozy corner chat. <laughs> yes, I wanted to get that right too. Sorry, yeah, forgive me for being uh for being me for wandering a little bit. Our dog is is uh she's she's got a little internal clock that's saying, Mommy, it's five o'clock. Either walk me or feed me. Hi, Cam Cam. Oh <laughs> mm -hmm. sorry. I, I'm pretty sure again, cozy mystery readers were our animal lovers. We understand. Yes. <laughs> the animal love is very real. I'm trying to pick her up, but she's not a big big fan of we've only had her a few mm -hmm. months. And she's not a big fan of being picked up. Baby. I, I, I mean, my, my little Daisy is still a puppy, so she's being. Oh, she's also really heavy. Oh, that's this is Cammy. <laughs> she knows who mommy is. I like the little puppy kisses immediately mm -hmm. happen. <laughs> I think she's hungry. She's seeing if there's anything, anything she can snack on. I was going to say now in the next series, you're going to have to have her dog breed and another animal to pay homage to her. Yes. Mm -hmm. So sweet, though. Mm -hmm. And you adopted her. You found her. She was the shelter. Well, she was actually uh, an organization called the Amanda Foundation, and they got her from a shelter. She'd had, she's not even two years old, they think, and she had puppies. She was on the street. Mm. So, um, so the puppies were all adopted, but she wasn't until us. And now she's mm. our baby. She found her forever home, though. Yes, she just waited exactly. for the right, like she waited for the right one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. she's still a baby. Yeah, she's a baby. She is. It's like having a toddler, and she loves. We call her the sock bandit because she keeps stealing stuff from our laundry, and we find that our den is like littered with with socks and underpants and shoes. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> I've been losing stuff and I know exactly where it ends up. And I also know when I see holes in the socks, why there are holes. It's not because of overuse. It's because of the it's dog. so funny. She doesn't chew them. She just like wants them nearby. Oh. Oh. Maybe she wants your scent near her. Yeah, that's what we think. Mm -hmm. Maybe this belonged to her. So now it's mine. We have the connection. Yeah. Oh, good little girl. So sweet. <laughs> so cute. I I was going to say all the animal lovers are all going, oh, adorable. 
<laughs> I don't know. She's she's like, okay, this is fine for a little while, but let's get let's get my food on. <laughs> she's like, Mom, I have important things to attend to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was curious if there was something else anyone wanted to ask. I tried to pull up your questions in the comments, and if I didn't catch all of them, I apologize. So please type them now. But I am curious if there's something y'all want to talk about or address when it comes to cozy mysteries, or if there's something you have coming up. I know you talked about what you're already doing a little bit, but if there's something else on the radar or a place where cozy mystery readers can find you and chat with you because you have a new blog post somewhere. I oh, oh, well, the one thing I'll say, and then I may have to sign off. <laughs> That's why I was like, let's skip to the bottom. <laughs> Um, uh, the one thing I'll say is that I'm currently doing what I call first book Friday giveaways. And, um, and cause I'm I want to introduce new writers, new readers to the first books in my series. So, uh, right. I did already, uh, plantation shutters for the Cajun country mysteries and I'm now doing here comes the body. Yay. There you are. Yay. And, um, and there, if you go to the Ellen Byron, dot com slash blog um the first blog post i've been sharing it i share it on my author page you can also sign up for my newsletter i'll be sh next month um i have two more giveaways for that book and then i'm uh, doing uh or one more giveaway i can't even keep track of my own stuff two more um and then i'm doing uh buy you book thief so um you can find the information the link to enter yay oh the, you're amazing god you're yeah. a genius um, so you can find the link to enter on my blog at my website. You there's every Friday I put up the link. It's there for a week, and so you can enter. And uh, then I do use random, but it's very random. I use random.org to generate a number that that coincides that matches up to the number um, of who signed, you know, where you signed up, where you fill in the sign up. So <laughs> looking a little chompish, Aww. like angry things. <laughs> yes, super yeah, cute. Uh, so for me. Um, you can well connect with me on my website, jenniferjchow.com. I have a newsletter there you can sign up for. And um, the next book for the magical fortune cookie mysteries is called Ill Fated Fortune. It comes out February, I think it's February 20th of Very next cool. year. And then um, I'm doing a giveaway, but it's part of a group giveaway. Actually, Ellen was part of this um, earlier. It's like a 10 by 10 by 10 oh, yes, giveaways, yes, yeah. 10 books, 10 authors, uh, 10 giveaways. And it's in support of our fellow friend author, Liz Mill Iron. And so, right. you know, you can probably locate, um, post about it on my social media, either Facebook or um, Threads, Instagram. I'm on at yeah. Jen J. Chow. Oh, someone said, good night, Scotland. Good night. Oh, thank you. Thanks for thank you for coming. I was going to say that's it's always amazing when someone says they're so, they're somewhere international. I'm going, oh, my gosh, I'm so honored that you're taking the time to stay up and watch. I'm going, I hope you're enjoying it. That it was worth the you know, lack of sleep. Oh, it, was, it's just... it is. Well, I, I you're so we're so grateful to you. So, yes, I, we hope we've made it worth Thank it. You to, so much. To oh, no, I mean, I love I mean, I adore these women. I think I was singing your praises on the Instagram stories. Like, I can't oh, even remember exactly you. what I said because I'm just so honored and happy that I was able to organize this. And again, I think y'all are both powerhouses in your own right in this cozy community. I'm going like, they said yes to me. Like, this is so exciting. And so Please, we're thrilled. We're yeah, thrilled we're that thrilled you, you asked. This. Yeah, exactly. We're like, we, we get to be, yay, thank you. Oh, and do sign up for our newsletters because we do do, uh, I know I do giveaways that are specifically mm -hmm. for my newsletter readers. Cause I just, anyone who subscribes right. deserves to be rewarded in some way. So. I love your newsletters, though. Thank you. you know, I've had to re-sign up for Jen's because she mentioned we, we had to connect over this at VoucherCon because I re-signed up because I'm pretty sure I got purged or something yes. like because I was subscribed and I wasn't getting you them, know but what? I am subscribed again. I, I'm back I in the can't. family. I can, on Outlook, I cannot get my own newsletter. So if you have an Outlook um, address, they make it really difficult for people to get newsletters. So uh, so I had to use a di what different email address to get my own newsletter. I actually now, cause I, I feel, I feel odd about it, but this is the only way. So I have the other, you know, I have a couple other Gmail addresses. I now subscribe to my own newsletter to make sure it sends when it's supposed to send. Yes. No, mm -hmm. I do the same yeah. thing and I couldn't subscribe. I can't subscribe to it through Outlook for some reason. They keep, it keeps, it keeps uh, like marking it as spam or I'm my own newsletter anyway. <laughs> But again, the email newsletters, I mean, they're so important. And I, I, I'm recommending both of theirs. And again, you're both on Instagram and Twitter. Yes. So you're cross-platform. So no matter where, Facebook. you've got them covered. Yeah. 
Twitter, I'm, I'm, I'm phasing out. So don't, don't follow me on Twitter. Yeah. It's not worth the time, but definitely Instagram and Facebook. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not really sure what's going on with, with Twitter. That's, that's yeah, I'm getting too many strange ads. I, I don't even know. I, so this year is the first time in a long time that the cozy mystery book club voting poll is now a google form because before it was on twitter so that oh. each poll will be live for the full seven days there were the four titles there was the drop down underneath so now it's a google form and both of them right. both of these wonderful ladies are both potential 2024 titles you know Yay. so i'm pretty sure I, I mentioned this in the stories right now you're both like all there's like a one percent difference between both of you are in second place I'm like they're gonna like they're, they could take this over in a nanosecond so people need to go vote for the books and if they want to read me i'm pretty sure Mimi lee and bubble tea are both on the list and then i think it's plantation shutters i almost said book by oh. plantation shutters hmm. because that one i put it under the category for uniqueness because uh -huh. it was the setting you don't really get too many louisiana so yeah. i actually have a category just entitled unique cozy mystery themes oh, and very cool Oh, I'm pretty nice. sure that's where your title's listed under, but they're both there for future voting if you're interested. <laughs> Great. But again, it's not on Twitter this year. It's on the Google form. Just that I thought Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, people recommended you. That's how, so people are always saying, how, do, how does the list come about? And people have to say, I recommend this five-star read. I would love for this to be on the TBR. So but the members were recommending you. So I was going to oh, say, that's awesome. thank, you to the members. Yeah, thank you, book club members. Thank, thank you, you. members. Yay. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like again. I, I specifically refrain from voting because I want to be impartial, and I feel like okay, they're recommended by readers, they're voted on by readers. But then I secretly have again. I'll be honest because they're both here. I'm like in the back of my mind, I'm like I want this person to win, but I can't. Like I, okay. I refrain. No, <laughs> but I do have my, my secret like voting. Like oh, <laughs> so. I'm like uh, at the end after the votings have come through, then I'll reveal all. But there, there is one. Where I'm like I want this one to win. <laughs> There's a certain like I want bubble tea to go up that list. People are already reading it though, so I'm like, are they going to vote yeah. for it a second time if they're already reading it? So that's also one of my questions. But anyway, <laughs> if there's anything else you wanted to add or wanted to mention where else they could find you or something else, because I know there's a little puppy here that wants her her mama. Yes, <laughs> I know she wants a walk in her meal, and I uh, know I'm just a newsletter, Facebook, and Instagram. Yeah, just find me website jennifer j Chow. Oh, oh and chicks on the case .com case. for our blog for our blog and then a cozy mystery crew uh as a facebook group that's you can join and and we take turns hosting every uh so because they have nothing going on it's not like they're writing all the books actually and, i'm and i'm hosting be. today i have to go i have when we get off and i feed her i have to go check and and comment and make sure everyone's okay I was like, your to-do lists are never going to get any shorter. They're both trying to accomplish quite a bit. <laughs> I, I guess I should, we'll be... I should plug one more. So that's, I should plug Sisters in Crime. Oh, <laughs> Sistersincrime.org yeah. because it's it's for people who want to support the crime fiction community and people who want to write mysteries and crime fiction as well. So Sisters in Crime and welcome everybody. And uh, I will, I'm present this year, but I'm, I'm rolling off at the end of this month and I will be immediate past president. You're I was going to say the last email you sent, I saw it, it said, pre it, it said something like president and, and there was a phrase that you use and going, Oh, she's leaving. <laughs> I was like, she shall come back someday. Question mark. <laughs> oh, that was so nice of you to do that though, because I'm sure that must've been a huge undertaking unto itself. That is a very impressive organization and then to be the head of or the chair i mean to be part of it in that way is just i mean that's such an honor and so impressive it's it's such an honor it's amazing board everyone's um we only have one staff member on there and the whole board and committees it's all run by volunteers so it's people who really love giving back to this community Maybe, I mean, I think that probably shines through. That's really why it comes across as so authentic because it is, it's coming from a place of love. And I, I will say I'm a lifetime member of when I joined, I did the lifetime membership. So. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I was going to say a little endorsement Yay. right there. <laughs> that was one of the email newsletters that went through. No problem. I've never missed a sisters in crime one. I will just throw that out there. I, I haven't awesome. had a problem with that at all. <laughs> Every other newsletter I've, I've, I've sometimes they'll be marked as red when they're not. Never had a problem with the sisters in crime. I think that's a sign of good things. 
<laughs> but I think those are all my notes and questions. I know Ellen has a dog to go take care of, but if anyone has any other comments, questions, now is your time to get them in because clearly like these women have very busy to-do lists. And so I'm just so honored that you took time out of your day to celebrate Cozy Mysteries and Cozy Mystery Day with us. Oh. Um, so happy and honored and so appreciative. Of Thank you, you so much. Thank and, you. Um, I, it's been a wonderful time, and I thank you for everyone who attended and and really appreciate it. And if you have any questions that you uh, couldn't get that come to you later or you can't get to now, please feel free to email me or Jen. I'm sure that's you know, or or Angela. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we'd love to answer any questions. That's yeah. great. This is the other thing too. This is why I'm always amazed at these women because they're so impressive. Their CVs are, you know, this long and they're so nice and kind and down to earth. I'm going, how are you like this? <laughs> like, it's so incredibly sweet. Like they really do mean email me. Like there's, yes, I mean, there's a reason why I adore them and preach them so much because they're so there's talented, so but they're also amazing. So if you do have questions, I'm sure they will respond to you and you're going to get a very detailed, thoughtful response as well. So I'm like, absolutely like please i'm like how do i do this i'm like okay there we go <laughs> so please subscribe please follow and if you do have questions make sure you check out their social media accounts because that was how i first learned about a certain fortune cookie series and that was how i knew about ellen's dog who's so stinking cute oh, to my kid's little face <laughs> she's heavy <laughs> I'm like, i've already lost one of my earbuds fell out i'm i'm half you know i can only hear half so i well, think i i <laughs> thank you I'm, so like, much i'm ready to go take care of the little fluff so i have my own little girl somewhere she's been she's being babysat but i'm sure she wants mama by now but oh my gosh thank you both to, for taking the time to celebrate cozy mystery day and being a part of this i am going to have this um archived on youtube so it will be people can access this after the fact and when i have the moment when i have the time i'm going to also transfer and save it as a podcast episode so everyone can enjoy the coziness across platform so I am fabulous that thank you so, and thanks just to everyone who's giving us their time thank you so much <laughs> i really appreciate it oh. yes we appreciate angela and we appreciate all of you who are able to be here tonight and and later in the future. I'm, I'm, I was going to say the cozy community is filled with so many wonderful people. That's why Cozy Mystery Day needed to be honored and celebrated because it's such a wonderful group of people. And so absolutely. Alan Byron, AK Maria DeRico and Jennifer J. Chow for being here. Please follow them, add their books to the TBR. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of Cozy Mystery Day. Yay. Bye everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. Thanks. Thank you.